Nodi's eyes. It was a busy day at the mission. The early hours of the morning were spent with the workers in Bible study and translation. Some of the villagers came to study and learn. The Bible was full of new meaning when they studied it with the mission doctor. Kasumo's father had been invited to come and listen too. Although most of it was beyond his comprehension, there were some things that were quite clear. The God in heaven was a loving God who kept his promises. His book, the Bible, was a letter to all men. Jesus died to save sinners. Someday the Son of God is coming from heaven to take his followers home to be with him. These thoughts impressed Father as he went to visit his two girls when the study period was over. Today he was to eat dinner with them in the dormitory. It would be nicer than eating in the dining room, for there everyone ate differently. They ate strange food. They used knives and forks and spoons. The lady put up a folding table in the girls' room so that they could eat by themselves, and Father was not embarrassed or shy. By the time dinner was over and Father was ready to go home, the doctor had rested and was ready for a busy afternoon in the hospital. Already people from the village were waiting in the shade near the door. Some brought their sick children with them. Others came bringing the crippled or the blind. Some came for treatments or for medicine. They loved the magic needle and believed it to be a miraculous cure for all diseases. When they left the hospital, they proudly displayed the round red spot where the needle went in. How often the doctor shook his head as a pitiful case came in too late to be cured. Fever had taken its toll. The doctor had repeatedly told the villagers that the swamps must be cleaned and the streams from which they took their drinking water must be very pure. They must boil all their water and milk to kill germs that cause people to become sick. But often his words fell on deaf ears. Many people continued to be sick. He also cautioned the people to bathe more often. The mission doctor opened the door to admit his first patient that afternoon. It was a little girl led by her grandmother. The child could not see, for her eyes were sore and swollen. After a brief examination of the child, the doctor questioned the grandmother. How long has she been this way? Well, began the grandmother, it happened on our train ride from the city several weeks ago. I was bringing Nodi back with me to live in the village, for her parents are both dead. While we were traveling, Nodi was lying on the train seat, crying. She was lonesome for her mother. The train seats were not very clean. She must have gathered up some germs from it, because it happened soon after we arrived home in the village. Her eyes became red and sore. Some of my neighbors said that I should bring Nodi to you right away, but I had no money. I had used so much for train fare to go to the city, so I mixed up a dose of medicine to put on her eyes, but it did not help. She got worse, so I decided to come to you. Can you do something to help Nodi? The old grandmother looked helplessly into the kind eyes of the doctor. How he wished he had the power to undo the damage done by the mixture that grandmother had ignorantly applied. If you had only brought her at the beginning of her trouble, when the child's eyes first showed signs of being sore, we could have given her regular treatments, good care and medicine that is prepared especially for the eyes. The cost would have been very small. It could have been paid for later on when you were able. We would have saved Nodi's eyes. Then you cannot help my Nodi, asked the grandmother. The doctor felt the muscles tighten around his heart. No, there is nothing I can do for her now, 
it is too late, he said. Then, said Grandmother, I suppose she must go around tapping with a stick, begging. She took Nodi by the hand, preparing to leave. Wait just a minute, said the doctor. I will give her some soothing ointment. It will relieve the pain and burning. I cannot save her sight. You have brought her too late. With a sad heart, the doctor watched Grandmother lead the girl out the door and down the walk. Then he called in the next patient. When the doctor was caring for his patients, the mission lady and the native teachers were having school. Kasumo and Kamari loved these hours, for they were learning to read and write. They made queer characters with the magic sticks on sheets of paper. It was interesting to find out what certain markings meant. A dog, a cat, a stone, or a tree. Since Lotus had been there many months, she could print many words. She helped Kasumo and Kamari when they found words hard to make. Tanny, one of the training teachers, was always willing to help. But best of all was the meeting in the evening around the fire. They sat in a circle on the lawn to hear the songs the mission lady sang. They listened eagerly to the stories that the doctor told. When it was dark, there were pictures on the big screen. Kasumo and Kamari were happy at the mission. They would miss these experiences when it was time to go home after the rice harvest. But it would be nice to be with mother and father and Adu again. <laughs>